working on this Whalen fan coil and it's got one of these pieces of crap in it. And the customer has had more than one problem out of these and yada yada. They're super expensive, OEM specific, even though it's a US Motors. What these manufacturers will do is they'll contract US Motors to make a special motor for their equipment and then they can mark it up three to four times at normal. So what we're gonna do is convert this to just a normal century motor. It's gonna be a 9476A. And then for controls, because I got a janky little thermostat here, we're gonna use ribs. Now the great thing about ribs is that whereas a normal relay takes, you know, like 400 milliamps, 450, to uh, hold in the coil, these are like 10 to 15 milliamps. Fully enclosed. I was looking for a 3C so I could do high, medium, low. Couldn't find one in stock, but uh, I've got a single and a double here. So we'll get those mounted and wired up. And uh, should be a nice little conversion for them. It's very hard to get in and out of this fortress, but luckily I got the keys. <laughs> They removed that, and if I prop the door, a god-awful alarm sounds, so ah, making my life difficult like usual. Got to get to that little hex fastener down in there. And, uh, I can't say en enough good things about this wear set, man. I have put the torque on this baby. They're hex plus, and they, they have like cut-ins right there that just make them... I've seen the test on them, you know, and they will not strip. This is probably one of the best uh, hex keys out there, in my opinion. Unfortunately, all I've got is a ball end stick down in here. And uh, then normally what I do is just put a wrench on it like that. Well, they are tight as heck. So I went in here and got that one. Now I'm going to take the mount loose, swing the motor down, and fish in here and crack that one loose. I just don't want to snap the end off of that. Alright, it was pretty tight, but I got the motor out. So I need to put the mount back and get these rings off, which I'll show you how to do that. And then a couple things I have to consider. I want the rotation to be right. I want the capacitor accessible and these oil ports accessible. So... Got to make sure I'm putting it in for full service for the rest of its life. That's the way service techs think. <laughs> Versus installers. Throw it in! <laughs> no. Good installers think about that too. Now there are a couple different ways to address these. Um, the ones on LG VRF units. Uh, I got a video on those um, showing the more unusual method but a lot of times you can just grab them with channel locks and twist them up like that all right i successfully got the shaft in which is the most important part always <laughs> and then i'm able to get the bracket on and then I'm gonna finagle the motor up like that. All right, got everything installed. I made the judgment call to put the cap in the back because there's no way to really give access to both. And I wanted the oil spouts facing up, obviously. Uh, honestly, neither one will get done. <laughs> this motor is never gonna get oiled or the capacitor checked, but uh, really this should be done more than checking the capacitor, but with this style of clamp, it's not a big deal to loosen it up and just rotate the motor around to access that cap. Now, I did notice that there was some run out on, on, this, on these wheels, so they're not gonna be perfect um, even after I get them tight, but I wanna eyeball this, get it centered, get my reveal equal, then I'm gonna go in there and tighten that uh, X nut right there. All right, that looks good. Little tip on tightening these. What you want to do is you want to tighten it 
back it off and then retighten it and you'll see that it goes further. You'll also see that the first time that you back it off, it's kind of easy to back off and then it's tighter. And that's because you want to take that hex nut and you want to have it dig into the shaft. But that's going to be like your first tightening and then when you go back, it's going to cinch down even tighter and that's one key especially on larger stuff this isn't really a big deal but that's one key on like your adjustable sheaves and stuff like that to make sure that that stuff doesn't come loose over time all right we test everything that's the run out i was talking about just the way it is ain't nothing i can do about that but uh she's smooth working well i can feel airflow so i know i got everything in the right direction all right, now it's on to the controls in that rat's nest, which I don't have a schematic for, but it's fine. I'll just trace out the wires and we're good to go. Now here's the kind of little stuff you need to think about for future service. So I have this ground lead here. Now I could move it to another bolt, but what I'm gonna do is just attach it up here because when this cap needs to be changed, the motor will need to be rotated that way. So if I attach it here, this ground wire won't have to be disconnected in order to get to the cap. Another thing to think about is cable management. So this here pisses me off. I, I used to buy these that had holes here and here, which makes sense. Uh, I don't ever rely on the adhesive alone to stick these squares, but why in the frick would you put a hole in the center? It doesn't matter if you use like a little pan head, like the flat ones, one of these, but once you put a screw in there, you can't get a zip tie in. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and it's like all the brands in all the supply houses I see have gone to this. But there's an, always another way to skin a cat. I'm gonna use this uh, right here to hold these up out of the way and then eventually go into that wiring box um these I, I have a hole puncher that i that i put holes in them with i just don't have any punched um, but the, these work great too i made a mistake and initially put it here i should have put it here but the advantage of here is i'm keeping the wires off of the metal housing so it should work out real well once i get it installed one thing I like to do is leave units better than when I found them. This one's just flopping around in here. This is the return air sensor. I'm gonna mount it up here. Um, all I've got is half inch knockouts and we need a three quarter for this one. So I'll show you how to deal with that. Let's see what else. I think I am gonna have to make my connections up here because I just don't have the wire to get into here. Mount that and probably just run the wires straight through. To make your knockout holes, you can use a bit like this. Of course, this is half inch, you'd need three quarter. And drill into here and just hope this doesn't spin out, which normally doesn't work well. Because then you're, you know, once that breaks out, your pilot's be shaking around. Knockout punch is a lot better solution. So all I'm going to do is just stick this through the hole and use the three-quarter knockout punch. Easy peasy. Get one of these. You want to make sure that you get the Slug Buster, this is made by Greenlee. Ooh, look at that. Um, or something equivalent. What it does via these little teeth right here is cut the piece in half. Now in this case, it's not that big of a deal because it's just a sliver. But when you're cutting out a big chunk, uh, having it split in half, especially when it's uh, thick metal, is really the only way that you're gonna get it out of there easily. Here's the rat's nest I'm dealing with here. And um, the key with something like this is just, you know, you just go one at a time. I'm gonna 
look up my commons. I'm going to cap off what I don't need, um, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that's going to make this easier, though, is my favorite wire stripper. And it is pricey, but ridiculously worth it if you do a lot of this kind of thing, but uh, works great on um, thermostat wire as well. It's just that with little teeny sensor wires and thermostat wire, you don't want to actually click it because these teeth right here will damage the insulation up in here. But uh, all you got to do with little stuff is just grab it and pull. And uh, But anyways, makes wiring work a lot easier now as far as managing this um, there are some connections that I'm gonna make and shove in the back so I want to make sure that my wires are out of the way and not gonna crisscross I get everything you know together zip tie it and then I'm gonna cut them all the same length so that when they're stripped, they'll all be together. I'll twist them up, wire nut them, shove them back in there. Now that they're together, I'm going to cut this at just a bit of an angle. You want to make sure that you don't have one strand holding your wire nut off. And these are my favorite wire nuts by far. They're made by 3M, but the way they have that flexible skirt and a long skirt. That's key to making good, reliable connections. I think these are made by Ideal. Um, same sort of thing. If you're not familiar with ribs, let me just show you what we got going on. So here's your control, and you can choose to either use 120 volt or 10 to 30 uh, low voltage DC or AC, which is awesome. Um, and then you've of course got your normally closed and normally open. Now these leads are tinned already the, the full length. And what I like to do, because there's my control for high right there. So the thermostat is gonna send out 24 volts down here through this wire and this, this is gonna be high mode. So I've got all of my commons hooked together and this right here, this blue and white is that right there. And so what I like to do when I've got like a solid wire and I'm going to put it in a spade is I like to fold it over. It just gives you more meat in there and it's a more reliable connection. We'll get that crimped on there, place back there. I'm guessing all the speeds are back in there. And then of course, I'm gonna have mains coming in on one of these. Uh, I'm gonna do normally open. And if you don't know, the normally open, that's, uh, that's gonna be the state of the relay when it's non-energized. So I want it normally open um, mains is going to come in here and it's going to go out this this common or either way I'm going to put mains here and come out and then that's just going to feed the high up into there and run that motor on high now I'm hooking up the mains to the commons of all the relays so that's going to be this right here and the way I like to do that when I'm dealing with a mixture of stranded and solid is to cut the strip the stranded longer because it ends up making more wraps and I just wrap it around the outside and the wire nut crushes everything together and that makes for a really solid connection. When doing just a single stranded and solid, it's best to leave some of the hairs of the stranded a bit tall and that way the top of the wire nut will grab those and wrap them tightly around the solid wire. That's my preference there. All right, all right. It's coming right along. Um, got my return sensor mounted. Always, always cap off your unused wires because you will have back feeding. 
especially true with transformers and everything like that. So here are all of those. I just cut off the ends and cap them just with this. I don't strip the wire, just put it straight in there and crimp that. Uh, I also decided to use a crimp nut because this is two stranded connections. A uh, little bit of a pain in the butt when you go to change the motor, but not that bad. And normally when I go to take one of those out, you just crimp it the opposite direction and sometimes that'll take it off or I'll just cut it out and go back in with a spade pair. Uh, anyways, uh, as you can see, I use lots of stuff here, random stuff like a rubber grommet. The best way that I've found to keep your van stocked and to make sure that you never run out of all the bull crap that you need <laughs> is to have a little notebook and I just jot down and keep a running list of everything I need. And when I'm at the supply house, I just go and uh, get everything that's on the list. And that's the way that I like to keep my van stocked. It's a lot of stuff to keep up with, but I'm out of these now or close to out. So I'm gonna get another pack. It's going well. Uh, I went ahead and fixed this drain. It was, uh, this drain switch, it was up too high but it's right about right now, so I like that. I'm gonna get everything nice and neat, and then we're gonna test the operation. Got everything tucked back up in there. I like to face all my wire nuts up. Uh, for one thing, if they happen to come loose, they're not gonna fall off. Um, and also, especially outside and things, it's just best, it's just overall best. Um, you know, when I got here and looked at this, all of them were just facing down. And yeah, I wouldn't say it's like a huge deal, but sometimes those little details can be important, you know, because it also keeps water and condensation from building up in there in the event that you have a leak or they're outside or something like that. So that's about as nice as that rat's nest of a wiring cabinet is gonna get. All right, she's working good. See we're in high right now. Let's see here. here. We are in low. Looking good, looking good. And then I guess we can go up to medium. We'll go in medium. Awesome. We'll click it again. Back in the high. Perfect. Everything's working perfect. A uh, couple mistakes I made. I had mounted the wires down here and it was in the way of the filter. So I moved my mount up here. I also just got lucky and had my wiring out here. But normally I try to remember to take a picture of that before I install the motor. So anyways, that's that.